Mm -hmm. So it, it is half past three sharp, so I suppose we can start already, yeah? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are glad to see you again. Yeah, you remember that we continue our series of webinars uh, devoted to teaching English to learners with special educational needs. And today we are going to focus on teaching English to learners with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Um, a little reminder that uh, all the webinars are conducted in Skovoroda Hub, that is our regional center of blended education in Kharkiv National Pedagogical University. After this webinar, I will share uh, the link to the presentation where you can find all the links to our um, university site, to the page of uh, Skovoroda Hub um, uh, at our site of university. You will also find the link to our YouTube channel with the recordings of all the events that have ever been conducted in Skovoroda Hub. And I highly recommend um, uh, just checking the events that we conduct there. All of them are free of charge and for many of them you can get a certificate. Uh, the speakers are the same, uh, me, my name is Olena, uh, PhD in Education, Associate Professor at the Department of uh, General Linguistics and um, uh, Germanic Languages, uh, and uh, my colleague Olena Chakratova, PhD in Education, uh, Associate Professor at the Department of uh, practice of oral and written uh, English in um, uh, our university. So, our agenda for today. We are going to uh, define uh, the term ADHD or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Uh, we will also consider the key features of this disorder. I will present some uh, basic tips uh, you may follow when you teach learners with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And as the cherry <laughs> on top uh, of the cake, Kolena Andreevna uh, will introduce us to a set of uh, online tools uh, which will make the process of learning and teaching a bit easier uh, for us and for these uh, learners. So let us start. <clears throat> with the notion of uh, ADHD. Uh, ADHD can be defined as a neurological disorder that impacts the parts of the brain that help us plan, focus on, and execute tasks. So again, just like dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyspraxia we discussed last time, ADHD is a neurological disorder. It is connected with the functioning of our brain. Uh, the symptoms of ADHD may vary by subtype. Some learners may be just inattentive, some may be hyperactive, and some learners may be of a combined type. So they combine the characteristics of inattentive and hyperactive types. Uh, an interesting fact is that um, uh, this disorder is often more difficult to diagnose in girls because they are usually of the first type inattentive and they are uh, easier, this disorder is easier to diagnose um, in boys because they are usually of both types, so inattentive and hyperactive. Uh, it is worth mentioning that ADHD is not a behavior disorder, so we can't say that these learners are just ill-behaved. No, it is connected with the functioning of their brain. Uh, it's not a mental illness, and uh, we can't say that it is a learning disability. Instead, we can define ADHD as a developmental impairment of the brain's self-management system, and as teachers, we need to take that into account. Um, <clears throat> uh, on the screen, you can see two symbols um, that are used by um, uh, people and learners with special educational needs. The first symbol is called the rainbow infinity uh, symbol. Uh, it is used uh, for neurodiversity, to symbolize neurodiversity, and it is very popular among 
autistic people. So the rainbow uh, stands for the spectrum or for the diversity of the symptoms within this disorder. And uh, this uh, infinity symbol uh, became the foundation for creating the ADHD butterfly. Uh, the idea for this butterfly grew out of a discussion on Facebook uh, among some representatives of ADHD community. Uh, so they were discussing which symbol to choose to represent uh, their community, and many of them resonated with the butterfly. Why the butterfly? Because uh, it uh, symbolizes uh, how their minds like fleet or fly quickly from one thing to another thing. And again, the rainbow, the colors of the rainbow stand for the diversity within this disorder. So if you happen to see uh, these symbols somewhere yeah, on a person's clothes, maybe a tattoo, uh, you will know that uh, this person is uh, rather uh, is either autistic if you see the infinity uh, symbol or if you see the butterfly, so this person has ADHD. Okay. <clears throat> uh, as for the key features, so how can we uh, recognize ADHD in our learners? Uh, ADHD is characterized by uh, three main features. So inattention, impulsivity, and hyperactivity. As I have already mentioned, some learners may be just inattentive. Some may be hyperactive, and some learners may um, uh, have all the characteristics. Uh, so let's look closer at every uh, group of signs. Inattention. Uh, so a learner with uh, ADHD uh, does not seem to listen when spoken to. Uh, such learners may lose things necessary for a task or activity. So they will often lose pens, books, and other yeah, things necessary for learning. Uh, they may seem forgetful in daily activities. Uh, they may dislike or totally avoid engaging in tasks that require sustained mental effort. So it's very difficult for them to focus. They may have difficulty, and actually they will have difficulty in organizing um, uh, their work. They do not follow instructions, or they find it difficult to follow instructions, and as a result, they may fail to finish schoolwork, jobs, or any other duties. They are easily distracted from tasks and even games. They fail to give close attention to detail, and as a result, so they make careless mistakes in schoolwork and other activities. Um, if we look at the second set of characteristics or signs, impulsivity, uh, so learners with ADHD may blurt out, and actually they will blurt out answers before questions have been completed. So before you as a teacher complete your question, this learner will already answer, and this learner will prevent all other students from answering actually. Uh, such learners may interrupt, they may intrude on others, they will butt into conversations, and they um, find it really difficult to, to wait for their turn. Uh, so as teachers, we need to give them uh, a chance to answer every single question we ask, but at the same time, uh, yeah, to ensure that all other students also have a chance to answer. We will uh, have this recommendation a bit later. Uh, well, and the third set of characteristics, uh, so hyperactivity. <clears throat> Learners with ADHD uh, fidget with their hands or feet, they may squirm and sit, they may even leave their seat in classroom or any other situations where remaining in seat is expected. They will run about or climb in situations where it is inappropriate. They feel restless all the time. They talk a lot excessively, even uh, when it is inappropriate, and they seem as if they are often on the go. They act as if driven by a motor. Yeah, we, it, it may seem that uh, 
uh, such um, characteristics are positive, like uh, being energetic all the time, but actually this excessive energy prevents them from learning and from uh, performing daily life uh, activities. So they are the characteristics. Uh, and now uh, I suggest watching uh, two short uh, um, videos. The first one illustrates uh, uh, the daily life and the school uh, life of a child uh, who struggles with ADHD. And you will see uh, some signs of this disorder in his behavior. So let's start. Get your backpack, way to go. Don't forget your homework. Okay, and clean your room, we have company coming tonight. Oh man. Oh, my homework. for this it took weeks for me to find this and there awesome come on Billy let's go oh yeah You have your homework? Morning, class. Good morning. Everybody, please take out your homework from last night. I'm going to pass back your quizzes from last week. Nice work, Billy. Thanks. Do you have your homework? No, I think I left it at home. But I did it. OK, well, bring it in next class, all right? Before we get started, did anybody have a chance to look up yesterday's question on Washington, D.C.? Oh, oh, my mom and dad took me to the Air and Space Museum. I'm sure that was nice, Billy, but if you know the answer, please wait for me to call on you. Anybody else? Susie. Washington, D.C. wasn't always our nation's capital. Philadelphia was the capital before that. That's right. In fact, our nation had two capitals before it. The first one was in New York City, and the second one was in Philadelphia. And then it moved to Washington, D.C., where it's remained for over 200 years. All right, we're going to have a pop quiz. Please take one and pass it back. You'll have 15 minutes to complete the quiz. And please put them on my desk when you're finished. Billy, you only need one pencil. Okay. Whoa! 
so cool. Billy, please take your seat. Fine. Okay, gotta get this finished. Okay, everyone, time's up. Pencils down. Please bring your papers up. But I didn't finish. It's okay. Bring your paper up anyway. Mm -hmm. So that was the first uh, video. What symptoms or signs did you recognize? In his daily life, at home, yeah, and while learning. Any signs of attention? Ah, Victoria. So, stimulating behaviors, mm -hmm. these sticks he has, like, moving his legs while he's sitting, then uh, these uh, sort of, uh, I don't know how to explain, like, routine blindness, sort of, because he kept constantly being reminded mm -hmm. that he had to take his homework, mm -hmm. and I feel like because he's being reminded of this daily, like, he forgets his homework all the time, mm -hmm. he has this forgetfulness, yeah. and because it's so routine to him, he just kind of uh, ignored these yeah. words, just yeah. to take your homework, and he forgot it anyways. <laughs> yeah, in spite of having been reminded, he still forgot uh, to take it. Yeah, that, that's right. And what about school? Mm, and at school, he... Uh, when he sits, he, he can't sit uh, calmly, yes, so yes. he moves all the time. He has some uh, small movements, uh, and he's very easily distracted. Mm -hmm. uh, any, any sound can uh, distract uh, him from his work, and uh, he is bad at managing uh, the time. The time. While doing the task. Yeah, he can't focus for a long time, yeah, and uh, by doing so, actually, by getting distracted, he also disturbs everyone around him, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But again, that is not his behavior. That is just the way his brain functions. Uh, and another video uh, illustrates a teenager uh, with ADHD. So let's watch this. Oh, sorry. I will zoom in. Let's watch this video, at least a part of it, just to understand what symptoms. You guys check out Space Neighbors yet? Yeah, it was good. Oh, dude, those spaceships were sick, and those robots, I am giant alien <laughs> robot dude. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, he's cute, but I kind of really like Cody Johnson. <laughs> yeah, and then they swooped in and they took over the whole neighborhood. I loved it. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, yeah the effects were me. like, he's like the best actor ever. I know, right? What? Are you kidding me? That guy is so overrated. What has he done lately that's any good? Um, okay, so. Hey, guys, wait like up. Like I was saying. Wait, was guys. Saying, Later, Justin. Yeah, we've got to go to class. Wait up. Hey, yo. Come on, give me a shot before I got to go to class. This guy. All right, let's see what you got. Woo. All right, come on, the Justin, don't you have somewhere you're supposed to be? Oh, come on. And don't be late. And don't run down the hall. Good morning, class. We're going to pick up from where we left off last time. The last, we talked about, sorry, the industrial age, the industrial age, the atomic age, the nuclear age, the space age. After the space age came the information age, the age of the computer. Now computers were around before the space age, obviously computers were used for calculating rocket guidance for calculating rocket fuel consumption. In the early 1970s,
Computers for industry were in their infancy. They were just about ready to explode. Now, the problem back then was the computers were very big. They took up a lot of space. Soon after that, the development of the microprocessor, the desktop computer, was ready to explode. In the early 1970s, we got the very first basic programmable computers that could fit entirely on top of a desk. Oh yeah, and that's when the first computer with a graphical interface came out. Um, yes, Justin, you know your computer history very well. In 1973, we got the first microprocessors that could fit entirely inside a computer. And that's when the microprocessor personal computer revolution <clears throat> microprocessors were introduced into desktop computers and that's when the microprocessor personal computer revolution really took off. Oh, oh, give me one! Mr. Parks, that is the last time I will allow you to interrupt my class. I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, let's finish here. Uh, what symptoms did you notice in his behavior? You can see two columns with inattentive and hyperactive impul impulsivity symptoms. Uh, Victoria, what did you notice? Well, aside from the ones on the list, what I noticed was that uh, he was very easily excited mm -hmm. and did a lot of movements with his hands mm -hmm. like they were discussing the movie at the beginning or whatever they were discussing together mm -hmm. and then before class had to start he went to the basketball court mm -hmm. and this is a physical activity or extraneous physical activity mm -hmm. that he decided he had time to do before class mm -hmm. so i figured this might be unconsciously like a coping mechanism of yes. some sort like mm -hmm. he tries to get all this hyperactive energy out before class so he can sit still yeah uh and what about the class itself what happened at the lesson well he uh, also was distracted during the class. He avoided uh, trying to catch up when he missed the beginning of uh, the lesson. Uh -huh. And he avoided writing down the rest uh, uh -huh. of what he needed to write down because uh, he missed a part of the text and decided it wasn't worth it. And instead he decided to start drawing in his notes. Yeah. And actually he answered the question, yeah, he didn't seem to be listening to the teacher, but in fact he was. Uh, exactly. Some kind of impression yeah, that he creates, but still he is listening. Uh, well, thank you so much. And here you have yeah, this information that uh, to be diagnosed with ADHD, a person must have at least six inattentive symptoms and six uh, hyperactive or impulsive symptoms. You can see the symptoms here. So can you recognize maybe yourself or your uh, students or maybe your children? Oh, unfortunately, I can recognize myself here very well. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. Do you have ADHD, Vika? Or you have um, some of this? I suspect, I strongly suspect that I do because I have had these issues most of my life. However, I lack an official diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. So six symptoms, yeah, uh, at least, uh, are necessary to be uh, diagnosed with ADHD. Uh, well, uh, but uh, this uh, disorder is quite common. Yeah, uh, in Ukraine, it is not as often diagnosed as uh, abroad in the USA and Europe, but still. Uh, let's go on. Uh, so, uh, we have analyzed some characteristics uh, yeah, of or typical behavior of uh, people with ADHD. And now let's look at the tips. Uh, so, again, in the format of a quiz, uh, you will see some statements and you need to decide whether this recommendation should be followed or it shouldn't. So, yes or no. The first one, have clear classroom rules and remind learners of them verbally or through posters. So, 
Is it yes and yes? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I hope it is correct. It is. The second one. So we have a clear reward system and involve the learners in designing it. So to, to, to reward them for positive, uh, uh -huh, for appropriate yeah. behavior. Probably, yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> uh, number three. Use routines and techniques for starting and stopping work and get in silence. Like the teacher can say, I will clap three times and everyone needs to be facing me by the end. To uh -huh, I can say a sum up. So probably yes. Let's check. Correct. Do not let the learner doodle or stand up and stretch. Do not let the learner doodle. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, someone thinks that it's okay, but actually that is no. You should let such learners doodle or stand up and stretch because they physically need that. Uh, if we say no, so let's check. That is correct. Uh, let's go on. <clears throat> Number five. Uh, allow the learner to work with headphones to cut out distractions and to be able to focus on uh, some activity. Yes or no? Okay, probably yes. Mm -hmm. uh, someone has a question? Yeah, um, uh, Vika. So if you have a question, you're welcome to ask. Uh, not a question, just a comment. Mm -hmm. Please. Which is on the a reward system because the reward system being uh, helped to be done by the students is actually a very interesting idea that I hadn't considered mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, ADHD is linked in some way to a lack of uh, dopamine and so these little rewards can be uh, a way for the dopamine system to mm -hmm. work a lot better and thus give them better attention span this mm -hmm. way because they know that they will get a reward for each part of the task. Yeah, so you can make up for this lack, yeah, with these uh, little rewards for they are so to say good uh, behavior. Uh, okay, uh, number six: set clear time limits for work. Give warnings when time is nearly over. For example, one minute to go. Teacher counts down to finish of activity five, four, three, two, and so on, just to let them know that the activity is about to finish. Yes or no? I saw some thumb, thumbs up. So probably yes. Yeah. So let's check. <clears throat> Correct. Then number seven. Let the learner take any seat they want in class. <laughs> yes or no? Any seat they want in class. Somewhere at the back with their friends. So you think yes for hyperactive learners. Okay, let's click on yes and check. <laughs> and actually, no, mm -hmm. uh, you shouldn't let them do that. Uh, you should uh, sit them close to you to eliminate distractions again. Uh, well, and uh, actually uh, a bit uh, farther away from windows. Then have a signal for the learner to use when they need to escape. For example, a card which you put on the desk. Like if they need to have uh, some time, so to say, alone, if they need to, yeah, uh -huh, I, I see a thumb up. Okay, probably yes. They can put this card on the desk and uh, yeah, have some, so to say, alone time. Let's check. That is correct. And you had a comment. No? no. Uh, then we can continue. Uh, number 11. So use individual laminated whiteboards so that learners can show their answers rather than having to choose when to speak. So uh, is it yes or no? Uh -huh, yeah. Uh, so by using these uh, individual whiteboards, you will give them a chance to answer actually every single question you ask. Yeah, and uh, uh, you will deal with the impulsivity, and this impulsivity will not uh, prevent other learners from uh, answering, will not bother others. Then, number 12, uh, say don't turn around rather than look at the board. <laughs> No, okay, no, 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 uh, okay, probably no. Let's check. Uh -huh. like next. They recommend using positive language. So instead of don't turn around, 
you should say look at the food, yeah? positive language. And the last recommendation here is allow learners to use fidgets or provide them with fidgets. And here uh, in the picture you can see some examples of these toys for them to manipulate something in their hands. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yes, probably yes. Let's check. That is correct. <clears throat> so they were uh, the recommendations, and if we sum them up, uh, we can say that uh, for teaching ADHD learners, uh, we can use first methodology. First is the acronym for fun, individualism, rules, simplicity, and time management. So as for fun, yeah, we need to. Uh, include some fun elements in our lessons, some novelty elements in our lessons, games, competitions. But on the other hand, we should also insist on following the rules. Uh, as for individualism, it is connected with a system of compliments and uh, the system of rewards we use at the lesson. So we need to praise uh, ADHD students for uh, the accomplishments, even uh, the little ones, uh, and uh, we can use the system of rewards like stickers, uh, even a positive note to parents. Um, we can allow such learners to sit uh, with their friend, or we can uh, play a game instead of some drilling activity as a reward. Uh, as for rules, uh, they recommend having few rules, not many. Uh, and these rules should be posted somewhere in a visible place for all the learners to see and for you to be able to address these rules as soon as they are broken, yeah? as soon as they are not followed at the lesson. Um, uh, they also recommend to include some funny elements in these rules and they recommend involving learners in creating these rules as well. Uh, as for simplicity, uh, they say that instructions uh, that you provide yeah, should be as simple and as concrete as possible. Uh, if the instruction is complex, then you need to break it into several steps and provide the instruction step by step, so uh, like stage by stage. Uh, and uh, I like the last technique very much. It is called Adapt Worksheet Technique. Uh, it may work not only with ADHD uh, learners, but with other learners as well, for example, dyslexic or uh, autistic. Uh, so the idea is that uh, uh, the learner can fold over the questions and tasks in a worksheet um, that uh, he or she has already completed or uh, that will be a bit later in the lesson, leaving just a task that is relevant at the time. So this task will be visible and all other tasks will be like folded and the learner will not be able to see uh, these tasks and will not get distracted. Uh, well, and as for time management, uh, so they recommend using oral visual symbols uh, in changing between activities. So you should use some signals yeah, uh, to as a transfer from one activity to another. They also recommend using timers for these learners to see how much time uh, they have before the activity finishes. Uh, and uh, um, you need to inform the learner about the course of the lesson. For example, you can provide ADHD learners with the, some outline of activities you are going to use uh, at the lesson. So this methodology is called first methodology, easy to remember, and I suppose that it can be used not only with ADHD learners, but with, uh, yeah, with mainstream learners as well. <clears throat> so they are the recommendations how to teach ADHD learners. And now, as I promised, <laughs> the cherry on top of the cake, Olena Andreevna will present her set of tools which can make I, I hope that which will make the learning process easier for ADHD learners. So uh, let me stop. Okay. Mm -hmm. thank, you. Say thank you so much for the introduction and this first part. Now we are going to discuss yeah, the second part. As we were discussing the previous time, there are a lot of tools, a lot of options. We can use the tools that we have um learned the pre the previous time we can use them 
now and i guess we can we will have an opportunity to use them with all the um um categories of learners uh, but here are some additional things some additional tools that might help us with um, getting better easier and more effective classes so uh, you can see here some stages they are not actually stages but they just look nice and uh, the point is that we are going to move in different direction uh, concerning these uh, the methodology you have just learned so we will start with fun and uh, we will consider the tool which is uh, about video quizzes it can be used for uh, both young learners um, teenagers for uh, adults whatever why is uh, this particular tool different so you can see here that there are some videos uploaded already. So you can use the um, tools that were created, the um, quizzes that were created by your, by your fel fellow teachers from different schools on different topics. Uh, the point is you don't have too many options here like you can see only 20 videos and that's it uh, and the process of uh, logging into the system is a little bit complicated you have to add your educational institution if it can't find it it will ask you to write it again and again and again but okay it's possible it's a little bit complicated but possible so once again, you can use the tasks that are given here. You can create one on your own. The major drawback of what I consider here is that you have to actually upload the video. I have done it here because it takes just, let's say, three, four minutes for video to upload. So if you are taking a video from YouTube, for example, you have to download it first, use some app for that, and then you have to upload it here. So it's not like you just add the link which would be nicer. But unfortunately, no, you have to upload the video. Why um, is it sometimes better to use this particular tool? Because when you open up the video and you have an opportunity to edit it, uh, there is an option where you can cut the video. Also, you can cut it with quite a lot of resources out there you can cut it you do a voice over to it uh, so ah, it's loading okay you can uh, just um, use your own comments here or whatever just to re read re completely different tasks with completely different ideas because you want to uh, you learn uh, you want your learners to i don't know find five uh, differences in uh, the text whatever uh, but what we mostly are interested in is the part with questions so you can add only multiple choice and open-ended questions plus some notes which might also be nice but you will have um, the opportunity to click at some point the video so you uh, the learner will understand where to stop or where to rewatch this little part of the video in order to answer the question you can all, also try to generate question with ai but doesn't always work for example for this particular video it doesn't work for some reason don't know why so when you start it because tesla has reported its lowest to, profit uh, be with sound you press let's say multiple question you Ah, it had to be English. Uh, so there is a question here. You have the answer. Yes, the answer. Let's say no, the answer, whatever. And this answer will be the correct one. You save it. And then you will have this time limit sport, time sport, and uh, time marker. So if the learner has some problems or difficulties with understanding whether where to look for the answer, he or she can easily click here rewatch this little piece little part and then you uh, it's getting easier because you don't want to you don't need to rewatch the whole video you won't uh, look for the answer somewhere at the end if the answer is somewhere at the beginning so although uh, this particular site this particular tool doesn't offer a lot of options for creativity with only multiple choice and um, true false questions still it gets 
this task a little bit easy. It makes the tasks a little bit easier for the learners. And we're not going to continue with that. And you can choose like different subjects if you are interested in, um, let's say, sharing something about let's say mass and um it, you can find the videos uh, by your fellow teachers here and different uh, languages in different languages and different subjects you can also use them once again it's important you can see this little uh, drop here uh it means the number of questions that you go you're going to use in the that they are going to use in the this video so you can easily it is um, a very good thing to have it and you will also um, get some report when the learner finishes with the task you will get the report that a student a gets five points and student b gets seven points for example so you can use it as a tool for assessing the um, academic achievements of your um, learners Moving on to games and activities here, just not these uh, parts, we are going to see this amazing, nice and very bright site uh, with a lot of different games. In most cases, it's more suitable for young learners because yeah, we can see the colors, we can see that it's so nice and uh, um, colorful. But there are a lot of different games that, games that can be used for various purposes. For example, as Halloween is coming, let's discuss. Let, let's um, uh, look at this uh, part in more detail. For example, we want to make a story. Uh, this will be just somehow uh, some kind of visual aid for your story. But you can. It, they are not going to read it so you won't listen to this story unfortunately uh, but there are some other games in which they are talking so you can uh, practice listening activity as well here it's more like about making up the story visual aids and then creating something new so we are going to make up a story. and they just uh, name the uh, game uh, and just just some basic instructions uh, and that's it. So we need to choose the character. So who do you want to choose? Which character? A girl in pink dress. Okay, dress let's adorable. choose a girl in pink dress. Yeah. And then... And then... Uh, we have to choose the first location. So which location are we going to choose? Let it be the first one, the lovely pink house. Okay, lovely I'm pink I'm so house. predictable. Let, yeah, let it be so. Now we will have... Halloween tasks. We will have more options. I mean, like choose the location. That's it. Blah blah blah. Uh, and uh, you don't need. I don't. Why is it taking so long? Um, when I tried, for example, this game, I hoped uh, that there will be the story but no we have to make the story uh by ourselves so now we have this character and we have to choose what is going on ah we have to choose uh the emotion happy girl sad girl surprised girl so what are we going to choose let me be surprised girl okay let it be the surprised girl yeah we can add some kind of um pets animals so you can see that there are a lot of options. Let's choose the owl. It looks nice. And you can place it anywhere. Let's place it on the fence. And then you can choose like additional objects. And because these are Halloween games, there is a broom. Let's choose a broomstick. Let's put it here. And you can choose some other things, um, objects, tools, so to say. and. Let's be, the girl is surprised. Let, let's give her an umbrella. 
something like that. And we can continue with describing the stuff. We can add as many objects as we want. So here, the pumpkin, the book, whatever. Um, but for example, we need to make our learners make up the stories and we will continue and we will get the second location. With the second location, we have to choose something else. What are we going to choose? Maybe the city. Okay, let's choose the city. So then it goes on like with the previous picture. You have to choose an additional character. What are we going to choose? A dragon, pink dragon. Okay, let's choose this pink dragon. And here is the dragon. So we have the, all the previous objects, all the previous tools, but the dragon has come here. When we can add something else again, we can change, uh, we can add the character, we can change uh, the girl, whatever we want. If we don't want anything, we don't want anything, we will proceed to the, to the third picture. And you like got the idea. So it's fun because it's colorful. You can use it actually with any type of learner because even for adults, it might be nice to uh, create this um, a story with additional uh, characters, with additional tools. You have to think about what is going to happen. You can have some kind of theme, it may be a horror story, a comedy, whatever. It just helps and it offers a lot of different nice opportunities. And because there are quite a lot of different um, sets here, um, your learners are not going to be bored with it. Games a lot of like popular as a kind of practice. So it's getting back to this set of our activities. We are going to look at another tool. Uh, it's called Go Noodle, and it offers some activities and some games there are also some skills things so you have to you can choose whatever um, your classroom lacks and then you can add this here there will be more about yeah, the thing of dragging um, like characters or completing some tasks in order to save somebody for example for example we need to uh, we are interested in skills and knowledge and we want to have some uh, coordination stuff uh, and We are interested in the activities. For you to see the activities. Yeah, yeah. and there will be some work uh, that you can print or you can use or share in this screen and you, you can do with your learners. And again, yeah. all of options, different think about it you can you can see that i'm not using any account here i just open it search in i can click here or end of halloween i'm interested in it i can download it and i can use it for my classroom plus there are some games here um, um the i uh, wouldn't say that they are really um, inspiring in a way because sometimes they just take too much time to explain what you're going to do and they are explaining it in quite complicated language so if we talk we, if we're talking for example about young learners it will be difficult for them to understand what um they what the game wants from you because the language is complicated but the um game itself is quite easy so it won't be uh, that interesting for uh, a teenage learner, for example. But once again, there are some options. You can choose them. You can, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, getting back to that 
idea there will be some nice uh, videos and there will be some activities getting closer to some particular uh, day there are going to be more different activities that you can use like i don't know you can color them and coloring is uh, always a nice thing um, no matter how old a person is next thing uh like uh it's not about get, <laughs> getting fun but more uh kind of being um, having more opportunities for different uh, um, students learners uh, there is one tool which i didn't know which category to use that is why i decided to, <laughs> to call it a worksheet we have talked about it the previous time natural reader the one that can uh, generate speech out of the text it just one additional helpful tool in order to do some long and boring tasks but we do remember that they shouldn't be long and boring but the point is that it can definitely help you if you can uh, yeah you can see it and um, uh, this step is called worksheets library um, because there is a site maybe you have heard about it there are a lot of different worksheets like you can for uh, in usual city, in everyday situation, you can use just any topic, grammar, vocabulary, speaking, and so on and so forth. But here is what we are um, using today, uh, right now, I, I draw your attention to is the step more. And you can um, use different flash, or you can find different flashcards here, different writing prompts here. You can use something like classroom management worksheets. And it can help you with setting the rules because you will have these flashcards, for example, you won't need to um, create it on your own. You will have some kind of uh, progress reports which will help with um, assessing the students and having some rules like I need to do it today or now and then I will get this smiley face and so on and so forth. Mm, and um, yeah, you can find something just uh, that might help you, like a set of rules or whatever, but as we have discussed already, it's better to create this set of rules um, together with the learners, but it might be just like a prompt, a help, uh, and it might be of quite nice design, so you can use it, easily use it, uh, not to get overload with uh, the tasks you are doing. The next point here, just a second, let me let me start it. Uh, we the next thing that we are going to talk is like continuing with this thing uh, with the question of rules is focus. Uh, I think, I hope, I, I guess you have heard a lot about different tools, about different apps that can be used to help you uh, to measure your time and be focused. Have you ever heard uh, or do you use something like that? Like some timer, some thing else? Okay, seems no. Mm -hmm. Then let's look at it. The most famous one, like everyone talks about it all the time. This is an app called Forest, or there is another one called some planting trees, something like that. Uh, the idea here is that uh, you can use it on your phone. Most of these uh, tools are about phone for apps for phones, but there are some extensions to uh, browsers as well. But like, but everyone, for example, in the class might have um, this um, app to use it. And you have to set the time. I will try now, uh, but the extension doesn't work really good. But we will try. And you can see it. Uh, okay, <laughs> then you will have to believe me. Uh, you have to set the time uh, when you are not to be distracted. It's especially useful with the phones because um, you will have this um, the list of the apps that are not going to distract you. For example, Telegram, Instagram, whatever. No one, you won't get notification in this, let's say, 10 minutes. 10 minutes is easy to achieve. And uh, in this 10 minutes, you have to do something. 
preferably connected with your learning or teaching activities. Uh, and uh, why uh, people like it? Because uh, they say that you are planting trees. When you are doing a good job, you will have this little seed and then it will grow into a little tree. And if you are doing your job bad, you will get these things that uh, the tree is going to die and you will feel sad about it. Um, and you can plant a lot of trees, of different trees, actually. Uh, in this extension, um, it shows that you can even, if you get to some particular level, if you're doing a good job, you can actually choose the kind of a tree. It's not the one that is offered there, but the one that you can, you, you can choose, whatever you like. And, uh, but really um, use, not useful, but beneficial to use because you can get this time limit. And if you understand that, or if you understand that your learner, you can show it to your learner. Like we have now 10 minutes and we are going to grow the tree. And if you are doing a bad job, your tree is going to die. And the person will have like, I need to save the tree. Hope. Hopefully, the person will think, like, I need to save the tree. And uh, 10 minutes might be easy to achieve. Let's say 30 minutes is more difficult, but um, things, as you can see, approximately the same. So here, the next one is about dog. Dog. And there is a room you um, give food, you give some water for the dog. Um, uh, hope no, because it's going to be sad if it is so. Uh, uh, but um, there are also different levels, like you, you will get a different rewards for it. Uh, you won't see it like. Why is the, uh, the tree thing popular? Because you can see that if you have the tree, we can see there are some options, but still, if uh, next door, again, it helps with concentration. And one more thing here, maybe it's like uh, the most Thing. Uh, here. Uh, who has heard about Pomodoro? Okay, no one has heard. That is a time management system. Um, uh, Victoria? Uh, yes, actually, I have heard of this. Uh, so if, as far as I remember, seems to have heard. Yeah, so the Pomodoro system is where you take mm -hmm. a certain amount of time to do it. your work and you solely focus on that. So usually it goes uh, 25 minutes of work and then you need to have five minutes of a break and you go through these cycles until your work is finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You are right. Um, and they say it works. I have um, thought about trying it for uncountable number of times, like 20 at least, maybe more. I uh, don't think it might work. I, I think it will work for some people, but just uh, I for me personally, 25 minutes might be not enough. Y yeah, you can definitely make this a period of your work longer or shorter but the idea is again that you will get here with this uh, app some achievements you will grow the forest here because of, the, of pomodoro stuff you will have this time limit of 25 minutes five minutes rest and so on and so forth and you can see here there are a lot of different oh here is Pom pomo cat which is Pomodoro Cat, and a lot of different tools like that, which might you or might help you concentrate, or might just 
add this fun competitive activity to your learners to concentrate some part at least let's say 10 minutes 10 minutes might be quite easy uh the next thing uh again kind of uh, talking about focusing uh let's get back to classroom management and that is what quite a nice site here um it's easy quite easy to register they say it is okay you will see it soon oh no won't haven't pressed the correct button uh, they say it's quite um they say it is uh forever free for teachers no I haven't tried it but you have to um, look into the system we don't need it uh, they have some videos it's not what we're interested in uh, there is this activity corner uh, if you um, if that is some kind of classroom activity you can add some um, learners here and uh, you it will be like a classroom management system uh, but it will cost already it's not it's not going to be for free but they have a lot of resources and um, what is interesting for example we can talk i have found one very cool activity uh, which is uh, which was which is which was uh, let's say all about me kind of you can also download them yeah it seems that it is the thing for just children why why yeah you uh -huh, there is another tab here yeah it seems that it is for children because it's like yeah little monsters uh but you can easily adapt the things that we have here for like a little bit older learners and uh, no it's not what i wanted to show just a second um i wanted to show you you can see that there are a lot of activities but i wanted to show you the one about rewards and self-assessment so it helps where did i find it okay there are some fun yoga activities so to say um it was something about self-assessment yeah um so you can easily adapt what is uh, what we have here to get some rules like keep on trying it's just some a kind of motivational poster you can see that one monster is uh, crying the second is doing the job but yeah if we keep on trying everything is going to be fine and, and um, There are some options for coloring, like everyone likes coloring and no writings and rule together. Okay, if we are looking at this picture, what classroom rule might we have here or motivational poster? What will we add? Maxima. I'm sorry, it's a joke, but I I uh, would add um, the second I for this uh, character. Okay, <laughs> that's an important stuff. <laughs> yeah. What else can we add if we are talking about um, the activities? Is something connected Say. with respect, or work in peers, collaborate? Okay okay great um i don't know how i can't i find it um yeah um so all these activities are going to be connected with those different with the different monsters that are provided here like because we have uh, this um, main character who is a monster uh but I won't find it now, unfortunately. Um, 
but it was really close to it. They added something and I lost it. But, you, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I have found what I wanted to say. That's called affirmation station. But we can easily transform what is uh, or adapt what we have here into some kind of reward systems. For example, I'm unique, I'm loved. I'm mindful, I'm grateful. And there are a lot of stars like that that you, you can already use them in your classroom uh, with your learners or even if it is an individual learner, whatever, for doing some kind of particular job because rewards are fine. And everyone, like everyone wants to get an award. It doesn't necessarily mean that um, we are talking about some lack of concentration. Like everyone wants to have an award. Right. Uh, and then you have these black and white parts, which can be colored if there is an opportunity for that. And you can e erase the um, headings here and write something else what you can think of. Uh, so it's nice because you can easy, easy. Uh, it's an easy accessing to rewarding and once again, get in some rules, add in some um, some fun to the classroom and get into the last and the longest point here uh, I, I called it project and time management but it's not about project management it's about again managing the activity but in most cases uh, these um, tools are all they are usually offered to just people who work in order to keep track of their tasks and complete everything on time. Uh, but we can adapt it uh, for the purpose of learning activities. And um, one of the uh, tools here, I started hating it because after I uh, used it for some time, now you, all YouTube videos show me the uh, add for this tool. So I hate it a little bit, but it's cool, but I hate it a little bit. Uh, so uh, you can, um, why uh, it is nice. You can have several dashboards here. You can have only one dashboard, but you can um, create like what you need to do, what you are doing, what you have already completed. So it can be used like by an individual learner, or it can be used for a classroom project, for example, or for some group that is working together. And you can assign this task in the free version option. <laughs> you are not going to assign the class, but at least you can show your learners that we are doing that stuff. So here what we need to do and what we are doing now, what we are doing now. There are some time uh, sheets here. So you can actually, with the help of this app, you can track the time without additional resources. So if you have, for example, all the learners, they are not interested in growing trees because like, yeah, there are enough trees out there. You can use this, um, this tool. Uh, they have this idea that you will calculate the time for which you are going to get money, but you can calculate the time for which you are going to get the mark, for example. And uh, you can also have whiteboards here. It's very easy to generate them. I had it yesterday. Oh, yeah, you see, I pressed one button and I already got um, a mind map with our plan, so with some ideas, with steps, and then I uh, haven't finished what we are going to do next. But for example, we are doing a project, we need to create this map, we can easily access it, and it will be in, there will be one place where we store it all. You can also add some, uh, what was deleted? You can add some uh, videos here, you can add some websites here, you can add some tasks here, so you we need to do that thing and then we will add this task and that's it uh, and we can add it to the calendar and uh, track whether we are in the process of achieving the goal or we are falling somewhere far far behind and there is a part about goals as well uh, yesterday i set a goal to read 15 pages of a book for example 
and we oh i have achieved it already mm, I, I, it, it was an accident i didn't mean to achieve it yesterday but you can get the goal um you can well, no 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 it's it, the goal for which you will have to pay we don't want to pay you can add uh, some additional steps for ex ah, here you can add some additional steps for example i'm not going to read only 15 pages but i'm going to learn 20 words and i'm going to write them down here so when i achieve my goal i will get this nice oh second i will get this nice golden cup and i will see that i have achieved uh, the goal plus i have completed some tasks in order to achieve it so it's nice because i will see some uh, price at the end and once again we all like having some prizes um what else do we have here all the other activities like you can come up with some documents you can um uh here you will see like the recent events or the agenda that you're going to follow so it's um it can be used as an additional tool to assign something to a student or it can be used to track the progress of some particular student or some particular group but it's um, um helps to visualize um everything that is going to be that needs to be done all the other tools here are somehow connected. So that one, um, that ClickUp app offers a lot of different options. Another one, uh, another tool that is quite um, popular also is called Todoist. It has uh, approximately the same um, set of options um, but uh, it's not that that is why i haven't registered i registered here but <laughs> yeah i haven't logged in um it's not that uh, visually attractive i would say but just for me um and it's easier to see everything else with the previous um tool then another one is uh Evernote it's also quite popular in the internet it's more about like just planning and making notes you can see it from the name like Evernote making notes but if you are the person or if your learner is a person who is into making notes that would be fine and the last one uh here is Trello. Trello is also um, quite popular especially among like um, the, in the way of uh, time man not management, just management, because of, for some reason they say it's very good to track it. Why is it good to track it? Because we have, we can add more boards here, but it's like the original setting that we will have to do, doing and done. For example, we need to do reading and listening activities and we can add and we can add what actually we need to do here where, where was it and when uh, we can um, add like the comment what we actually need to do here so if i need to read let's say i need to read 20 pages here let's get in pages here and i will um, know that by the time i have finished it i have read 20 pages and then i will Put, oh i'm doing it now sorry and when i finish i will have it in this um board that i have already done so it's easier when you look at it like okay i have only one task left maybe two tasks left, but i have already done two tasks which i'm nice and perfect so you can organize you can add more boards you can organize it in uh, different ways and yet again it can be um used for groups uh, for classrooms uh, you can add several boards and you can try to know show um show your classroom the activities you're going to see so for some learners it's going to be just a nice scene uh, nice thing to um get some additional help what you're going to do for some learners it's going to be just the stuff you have to follow the rule here is uh, the time limit i have 20 minutes i have let's say here i have 20 pages to do i have an hour to read and then i can 
at last uh, drag this task from one board to another board, which might add what might make my learning or teaching a little bit easier. So these are all the tools for today, um, for fun and for not fun, but managing and doing, completing the tasks. But I hope uh, that uh, it is possible, it will be possible for you to use them to the benefit of getting better and better and easier classes. Yeah. Well, Andrivna, thank you so much. That is just for today. Next time we will have another set of tools, <laughs> but for autistic students already. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. The tools are amazing. Um, I'm uh, a person who, who likes using uh, old school pen and paper. <laughs> I like crossing out my tasks, <laughs> but still the, the online tools are amazing for new generations of our learners. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks everyone for joining our webinar today. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed that uh, a lot and we are looking forward to our next meeting next Wednesday. We are going to discuss teaching English to autistic learners and another set of tools. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.